So, hi everybody. Um, uh, I, I'm Dario Paniagua. I'm I'm from from Argentina. I'm a, a visual scribers coach. So uh, basically, I teach people uh, amateur scribers that want to to become professional practitioners. And uh, today, I, I'm going to talk about uh, visual metaphors. Okay, uh, visual metaphors. Uh, are our main vehicle to communicate, to, to, to make more elaborated uh, images, okay? So the first thing I, I want to, to tell you is that I don't own the truth about visual metaphors. I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about my own experience and what has worked and what hasn't worked for me in all these years. Um, and I will start by uh, defining some concepts first. This way I can ensure that we level up the meaning of some job descriptions. And uh, this is important because some things I will say affect differently according to uh, what you're doing. So uh, what is a sketch noter? What is a, a graphic facilitator? And what is a graphic recorder? All of them are uh, visual thinkers, but the type of maps they do are really different. And the connection with visual metaphors is different. So per perhaps you have other definitions and that's okay. But I want to make sure you understand what I mean when I refer to those te uh, ter terminologies, okay? So uh, let's start by a sketch noter. A sketch noter is a person who takes visual notes for himself. So it doesn't matter if his map is a mess or if an icon is not clear as long as he, as as it he makes sense for him, okay? So I, I put some, some images of uh, some sketch notice examples, okay? So they are more like personal things, personal notes. Then we have the graphic facilitators. Uh, graphic facilitators do two things simultaneously. They lead a meeting and help people visualize a situation at the same time. Usually they don't have so much time to think in terms of uh, complicated metaphors. They need to be understood right away. And usually a map that is produced on an internal meeting by the graphic facilitator is shared with the people who attend that meeting. So everybody that sees that map um, understand what had been drawn. And another characteristic is that the maps they do, and I show you some examples, uh, are based on a path. So as, as you say, as you can see here, the path, most of the time, that path is the main metaphor. Okay? So a graphic facilitator works with uh, steps, with uh, stepping stones, with uh, templates, uh, Mm, iceberg diagrams, as you can see here, okay, or here. So in all these examples, there's a path to follow. And finally, we have the graphic recorders. So graphic recorders are um, hired to map someone else's speech or even to map a meeting. But uh, the main difference 
is that they are not leading that meeting. So they are just hearing what another person is saying. So because they are not on the spot, they have more time to plan their maps. A graphic uh, recorder is somehow a kind of a performer. They transform speeches into stories. And many times the map that they produce could um, eventually be shared outside the context where they create the map. So that map need, uh, needs to be understood by people who were not present when the map was created. So I show you here some examples I put, okay? As you can see, the drawings are more elaborated. The metaphors are more elab elaborated because the graphic recorder has more time to plan. So usually he knows the information in advance. The graphic facilitator works on the fly. He doesn't have time to think, so he will produce more icons than me metaphors. So as a recap, a graphic facilitator produced more straightforward icons and metaphors. They also could use the same metaphor templates in different meetings because they are trying to visualize situations or problems or help a group of people to achieve a goal. So for example, as, as I was saying, stepping stones, uh, mountain paths, uh, iceberg diagrams, empathy graphics. These are metaphors that help people uh, really visualize situations, problems, and future steps. Graphic recorders produce more elaborated maps. They need, they need to produce unique maps. They can use the same metaphors over and over again because they are visualize, visualizing speeches, conventions, kickoffs. So clients want uniqueness. They can draw a mountain path over and over again for different clients. So these, uh, these differences are very important because the type of metaphors you produce will vary depending on these roles, okay? Uh, so what are visual metaphors? A visual metaphor is an image that the viewer is meant to understand as a symbol for something else. You basically deconstruct the mental model of people by creating new meaning in addition to the image straightforward sense. Uh, straightforward sense okay? So another important thing is this. This slide that you're watching right now. Metaphors help us to catch people's attention because attention is about difference and um, a particular element can be emphasized when it's, uh, when it's this similar. And I will give you some, I will show you some examples here. And I have a question for you. Where did your eye drop? I show you another example. So metaphors help us to break the pattern of um, similarity. And this is a very, very powerful concept. I, I show you this, this famous uh, cover about the Beatles. Where did your, did your eye drop here? So this concept of simil similarities is very powerful uh, because if you understand this, you learn to detect which metaphors work and which doesn't. This, this effect has a name and is anomaly. And you can do that with icons. So uh, when I use icons and when I use um, 
metaphors, and this is personal, okay? Um, I use icons when I don't have time to think, uh, when I don't have time to draw, when the concept I'm depicting is not vital in the map's overall message. So uh, as a recap, I use, personally, I use icons when I want to decorate some concepts of my maps, okay? In the other hand, I use metaphors when I want to transform an abstract concept in a concrete concept. When I want to drive attention to a specific part of my map, and when I need to go uh, into details and explaining a concept, an, an icon is not enough. So an important thing is that visual metaphors and icons are like, uh, like shortcuts because they allow you to say something complicated in, a, in an easier and more straightforward way. So, but, but this uh, doesn't mean you have to come up with obvious solutions. So every time you draw a map, and of course a map, when, when I say the word map, I also mean, I, can, I don't know, a, a, a piece of, of, of paper, a post-it, uh, whatever. You have, to, um, uh, you have to draw the information uh, people need without spooning it to them like infants because, because that's where you draw cliches. So I, I always insist in the difference between icons and metaphors because as visual thinkers, our first object, objective is to create maps that uh, make people read and think and not to make uh, people see just nice little drawings. Um, all this theory uh, I'm, going, I, I'm explaining um, will not be applicable if I don't take you first to the right state, to the right mood. And this is the, um, the playful state you used to have when you were a child. So, uh, um, why we should, uh, thinkers struggle to make metaphors? Not because they don't know how to do them, uh, because uh, doing metaphors is something in, innate. We, we used to draw a lot of them before, uh, before school, before elementary school. But uh, the problem is that visual thinkers struggle to create metaphors just because they are afraid of not being understood. And uh, fear causes conservative thinking. That's when, that's when uh, um, practitioners draw more straightforward icons, which are good because everybody is going to understand you, but at the same time, drawing just icons, it's not so good because people will trip over your cliches. So uh, let's start with a, a warm-up game called uh, uh, scene storming that will take you to that state I, I was telling you. It's, it's a perfect exercise for you. And it could also be a great warm-up um, if you, I don't know if there are facilitators here, but if you're facilitating a group of people and need to break the ice and put them in a state, uh, in a playful state, uh, this exercise will improve your uh, ability to create uh, images that tie together multiple themes. So firstly, uh, Yuri, I will ask you if you can tell me a number from one to seven. Seven. Which number, sorry? Seven. 
Seven. Another yeah. time. Another number from one to seven. Why not seven? <laughs> okay. Another one. Six. The last one. One. Okay. <laughs> Extremist. Okay. So I want you to write down these words. Salmon, tornado, wait, uh, massage, and stage. Okay. So you have three minutes to sketch a scene that contains all, uh, all four of, of, of the words uh, as images. And you don't have to combine the words into, a, uh, into one icon, but you must think about why the four things belong in the same scene. So don't try to give sense to the drawing scene because probably it doesn't have sense at all. So I don't want you to be uh, clever or creative. I want you to be uh, absurd, foolish, okay? Because that's when creativity happens. Don't be to be creative, just try to be absurd. I, I show you just some examples. So this is an example combining the words crab, iceberg, sky crapper. Another example, combining boots, wheelchair, tram. And another example, combining opera, vegetable, and iPod. While, while you, you draw, uh, I, I, I want to tell you that this is an, a very powerful warm up for people but also uh, is something I use when I, when I need to, to, to stop being so, to stop being mental. So to take myself to that, to, to that uh, state of, uh, of playful state, okay? Because the best metaphors happens or uh, born when you, achieve that state. That's the children's state before school. So they, they, don't, uh, they don't have, they, they don't waste so much time on thinking, they just draw. So this, this exercise helps you to achieve that.
Cool, 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 cool. Cool drawings. So let's do something. Please uh, keep drawing. Keep drawing. This is, this is just fantastic. I'm, I'm just seeing some very cool things. But uh, I have so much information I want to share with you uh, that I will continue, meanwhile, with the um, uh, presentation, okay? Um, mm, I, I, can, I can't be superficial with uh, mm, visual metaphors and to really convey all the information I have, I have to, to give you all the presentation. So I will continue, you can continue um, you can continue drawing, and then I take a look uh, to, to your creations, okay? So, um, I will talk about something very common, that is arrows and connectors. I will start uh, talking about arrows and connectors because this is a chronic problem in amateur maps. Um, as you see in the examples, there is this PowerPoint tendency to connect pieces of information with arrows and uh, to group text in bubbles. But I will teach you two first simple and very, very powerful tips to substitute arrows and PowerPoint shapes with little metaphors to make your maps more engaging, okay? The first one is to link parts of your map with objects. So the question you have to make yourself is, which element uh, could make sense to use to connect certain pieces of information? So sometimes the topic gives you a clue on uh, which object to use, okay? So like, I don't know, the example, the simple examples I did here. Uh, let's say I'm talking about, uh, flying or, or whatever. So instead of, of drawing uh, an arrow, I draw a plane that I'm using as a metaphorical connector. And instead of using simple bubbles, my bubbles are clouds. So it's like I'm dressing shapes and connectors with metaphors. Okay, or I don't know, I'm talking about relations and I draw a bridge between two persons, okay? The second one uh, is easier because you will be considering the whole picture. So you build your map on top of a metaphorical set. So think in terms of uh, of, of board games. There's a path to follow, a race circuit, uh, a big circular object. Uh, so you give people an intuitive path to follow where it's not necessary to use arrows. So look this example, for example. The path, it's a, a, it's, it's a fit watch. And it's related to the main topic of the map. Uh, look, this ex excellent example. Uh, it's very simple, but the information, the data, it's inside some uh, pieces of ice. Okay, so I'm avoiding using um, a PowerPoint. A PowerPoint PowerPoint shape or a, a bubble or whatever. Look at this ex ex excellent ex, uh, map. It's about a scri scriberia. The connectors here, here is the, are the trunks. As, as you can see, the trunks guides your eye to where the most 
important information is. So next time you need to connect information in your maps, you can use these two tips to replace those arrows and bubbles with a little bit of creativity, with metaphorical scenarios. Many times choosing, uh, choosing a scenario where to put your information boost your overall map. Um, the other, uh, yeah, 10 days, uh, when, when we have our last chat, Yuri, uh, yeah, one week ago, right? Remember, you, you were asking me about which are my uh, favorite metaphors. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I was telling uh, Yuri that um, I don't have preset metaphors. I have preset ways of doing metaphors. And that's quite different because having a method is what allows you to come up with bif different solutions. So I know, I know that many of you have a library of icons, which is really good. Uh, but I, I, what I want you to incorporate is the methods I'm going to talk to you about because this way you will have a method to create and to come up always with different metaphors, with different concepts. We're going to talk about three methods I use. The first one is uh, called the disruptive model. So uh, what does being disrupt disruptive mean? To be disruptive means to prevent something from continuing, uh, from continuing or operating in a, in a normal way. <clears throat> and there are three ways to achieve this. The first way, the first, the first one is to uh, unrelated a related image keyword. The format is, is very sim, uh, similar to an icon. You see the complete and isolated object, just like an icon, but uh, you don't apply any, any transformation at all. But you link that image that you're drawing to a keyword that doesn't describe the literal meaning. So at, at first, there, there is no apparently connection with the keyword you write, but of course uh, there is. So a cool, a very, very simple exercise to do this is an exercise called a uh, single keyword disrupt disruptive association. <clears throat> So basically, uh, we have a key there. You have, I don't know, let's put, let, let's do it quickly. I, I, I just want to, to give you the, the, the exercise, uh, but I want to, to fit in the time I have to, to give you the most, the most I can. So let's say 30 seconds to write four words or, or two or, or, or what you can about that image, okay? So of course you can't put, put key. Whatever comes to your mind, you have to associate other words to that image. Okay, I continue then it's 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 difficult to see the 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 mural now yuri it's which is really good because there are a lot of things going on there so i'm happy and we have a lot of answers on the chat to to this particular riddle people just wrote down the the words here 
Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I, I, I missed the chat. I don't know why. Give me a second. Okay, I continue then. If there are questions, I answer them afterward. Okay. So the second one uh, is out of context. So you draw something or someone in a different place from the place people expect to find that thing. And, and the disruption here happens in the context where you draw your main image. This is a very powerful type of metaphor. So the second exercise is to draw a context, a disrupting context to this man in his boat, okay? Again, don't try to be clever, don't try to be creative, just be absurd. This is, a, this is the best tip I can give you. Be absurd, be foolish. That's what make uh, creativity happens. Yuri, um, are you, uh, do you agree to, to continue in step, instead of uh, stopping and, and watch the, uh, the things people are creating? Let's ask the group here. <laughs> I shouldn't decide for everyone. Okay. So, so uh, you guys, what do you think? Just tell me so, uh, because I can, I can read the, the chat right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into the chat. So, uh, so, so Dario suggests that uh, while we are given prompts to accomplish, uh, we, we don't do the, the stops to upload the, the stuff to Mural. Uh, we just uh, do the assignments and just keep on listening to the presentation. That's what uh, you're suggesting, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, of course we could upload later because the mural board will uh, keep the access. So, looks like um, people are okay with your suggestion. So let's just uh, do as you offer. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and the last one, it's really cool. I love it. Uh, I call it Frankenstein it. You blend up unrelated things together to uh, create a new something full of meaning. So all the things you draw here are uh, just impossible because they, they don't exist in the real world. So people don't recognize them at first sight, okay? And I have a very cool exercise here, uh, which I call the incoherent web spider mashup, okay? So uh, what, do you, uh, what do you get when you combine a spider with all the elements you see around. So I did uh, one example here, with the bomb, but I want you to combine the spider with uh, each of the things stuck uh, in the spider web and draw the result in the space that you have in the web, in the outer space, okay? 
this is another very cool uh, warm up you can do to create uh, metaphors based on the Frankenstein uh, concept, okay? To, to blend things. So, of course, you can substitute the spider, the central image, with other images, okay? It could be, I don't know, a person, the, a person face could be in the center and other objects around. So it's a very cool exercise to come up with uh, uh, incoherent images. Don't worry about this concept of being incoherent because we always have something that save us when we create visual metaphors. And that is keywords. So I'm, I'm never afraid about not being understood because I know that always I have my keyword that will give sense to that uh, incoherent image. Remember that we are always trying to uh, grab people's attention. So the more you're disrupting, the more you're creating attention. Uh, it also makes your audience remain more time reading your map. Why? Because as soon as they see something out of place, they take time to figure out what, what it is all about. The second approach is the uh, children approach. So uh, uh, whenever you're doing visual thinking through um, graphic recording, uh, graphic facilitation, uh, sketch noting, and, and, and you have doubts because you don't know how to draw, my advice is always go back to your inner kid because that, uh, that, that was the period of your life where you were an expert. Don't, don't be afraid to express your ideas through a drawing because fear, uh, fear causes conservative thinking. And, and when you were a kid, you had no embarrassment at all. The, the first thing is uh, to color. So th these are things that uh, children uh, do a lot. This is one of the drawings of my daughter. Uh, and uh, the first thing they do is that, that they color illogically. So a cat could be green, a man could be purple, and a mountain could be, I don't know, red. Not being linked to real colors helps you create awesome color schemes and help people focus their attention. The second thing that children do a lot is that, of course, they don't know the right proportions. So they, they make proportions look uh, absurd. So uh, drawing big things that should be small and vice versa create disruption on what people expect to watch. So I don't know, huge insects, uh, giant objects, you, uh, you name it. But this is an, another really powerful, powerful thing that children do and, and you can incorporate when creating metaphors. And the last one is, uh, humanize animals. 
So these are the first visual metaphors children create without uh, even know it. You, you stand up animals in two legs and just uh, dress them like humans. Uh, <clears throat> animals instead of people sometimes make concepts easier to communicate. So these children tips are uh, powerful and, and you used to be good at this. Uh, long, uh, as I always say, I, I, as I always say, uh, long inactivity has eroded your, your sharpness, but you were good doing this. The third method I want to talk to you is that uh, I, uh, it's, it's a very uh, simple method that I call the what it would be chart. And, and this is a simple question you can make yourself whenever you have uh, to re uh, represent an abstract concept with a metaphor. So it's, it's a mental chart. Let's, let's put an example. You have to picture the word uh, change. So in your mind, you picture the following chart. And in each column, you have this single labels. Labels. Uh, animal, object, uh, abstract. I'm, I'm going to explain that. Uh, and situation. Then you ask yourself this very simple question. If change were an animal, what it would be? If it were uh, an object, if it were a shape, or, or if it were a situation, a, a situation I mean a verb or, or an action, what it would be? So the answer that best pictures that concept and fits better with the context in which is said, that will be the image that you will draw in your map. So all this process happens in your head. I just did the, the, the chart to, to visualize what happens in your, in your head. So it's just a question you make. So I want you, I want you to try you to try to do this. So how would you represent change? So try to fill the columns. You, you don't have to, to find an image for each column, okay? Because that's how it works in real life. So if I have to represent a change, and the first thing that comes to my mind is, is that I can represent change with a, I don't know, a butterfly. Okay, I draw that. And, and let me explain you what, is, uh, what I mean by abstract. Because many people ask me uh, what it would be to represent something with, ge uh, with geometrical shapes and I will, I will answer this question showing you these drawings <clears throat> that they were done by, you know that many of you know him, by Dave Gray, the co-author of GameStorming. And they are a good example on how uh, he uses shapes to represent abstract concepts. So he, here he's talking about different types of companies And uh, as you can see, he uses, this is another example, he uses a lot of uh, geometrical shapes to explain concepts, okay? So going back to this chart, the abstract column refers to that. Okay? So you can, you can do that exercise with the word change. 
Uh, okay, um, and now we go to the last part. Uh, I will explain some gold commanders. Uh, these are some uh, actionable statements that uh, I use randomly when I have a creative block. <clears throat> so I, I carry um, with me um, uh, a deck of cards that I did um, that uh, I pick up randomly and they say a sentence that helps me to unblock myself. Mm -hmm. Why they are connected to metaphors? Because they help you to think uh, laterally instead of literal. They are uh, disruptive and uh, concrete actions in a very short uh, sentence format. So they act as triggers to help you unblock and come up with good metaphors. Uh, some of, the, of these commandments that I, I, I choose today to, to share with you contains uh, some of the previous methods you have already learned. Um, it will be very long to, uh, to explain all of them, but I, I will explain uh, a couple that I think they are key and they will help you a lot to create metaphors, okay? So let's start with the first one. The first one is very simple and it's very, very powerful. And it's think the opposite. Uh, sometimes simple things can give you the best results. So drawing the opposite of the, of the of the topic you are depicting means changing the point of view. It, it's like the proverbial, uh, proverbial uh, phrase, is the glass half full or half empty? And, and you just have to ask yourself the opposite thing of the statement someone is saying. So for example, if someone says, the world is changing, you change the point of perspective before drawing by thinking, what if the world wasn't changing on our own? And what, what is the, yeah, what, what if the world is not changing? And, and, and how would I depict that? So this commandment helps you a lot to avoid cliches. Okay. The second one, it's related to what I mentioned before. So it's about humanized animals. And here I also add humanized animals or objects. Uh, I will go a little bit in deep about this. So we, we usually identify animals with uh, very clear behaviors. And uh, we generalize these characteristics. So the lions are the animals kings, the ants are workers, uh, I don't know, the bees are well organized, the monkeys are playful, the bears hibernate. These well-known characteristics are a generalized perception and that makes them a great resource to apply when describing people's behavior. So humanizing these animals makes your audience automatically attach these characteristics to the people you're drawing. Uh, um, humanizing objects works uh, differently because we don't associate objects to behaviors, but to actions. And, and this opens a wide spectrum of possibilities because the, recogn uh, the recognizable action that the object does is transferred to people when we humanize those objects. 
So uh, usually we humanize animals to create metaphors that exaggerate a person's personality and we humanize objects when we want to create metaphors that exaggerate people's actions. The second uh, commandment I have is build and burn bridges. And this is uh, really another powerful commandment. This commander, commandment makes you find uh, connections between things, but it also helps you cut those connections depending on where you want uh, to put the focus. So you don't have to be literal by drawing bridges as the, as the connector element. It could also be roads, wires, uh, tunnels, rails, I don't know, uh, ladders, stairs, uh, arms, like in this example, uh, pipes. So uh, these are great connectors we use when we want to create metaphors about uh, improving relationships between people who are very different or do not like each other. So we can connect or disconnect not only people, but also companies, institutions, countries, areas, or we can uh, also mix by connecting or disconnecting people with objects. As you can see, the, the possibilities are are endless. Um, okay, it's, I, I give you a lot of information I know, <laughs> um, but I, I think that we, we have to close now, right, Yuri? Uh, and I, I, I want to, to know if someone, I don't know if, you, if, you, if it was too much information, if you have questions, uh, you can write me an email. Uh, you can write me here in the chat. Uh, you can contact me. Uh, I'm all, always very open to, to ask questions about this, these topics and, uh, and always uh, happy and, and, and open to, to help. Well, you gave us uh, a lot, I would put it this way. <laughs> and thank you for doing that. I guess, um, yeah, let's uh, wrap it here. And um, that's how people can reach out to you through your website that we can see on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I, now I write my email in case you want to, to know something. Um, uh, in, the, in the website, you will also find that I'm... I'm opening um, uh, like a, a training, a training course about visual metaphors. Uh, so you can leave your information there if you want to be notified when, when this will be available. But apart from that, if you have questions about this, please write me and I will be happy to, to, to give you answers. Okay. Yes, because I know that the time was very short uh, and probably you have a lot of questions. So please don't be afraid to ask. Super. And uh, guys, um, I put a frame on top of the mural board uh, to collect uh, your reflections about today's session. Please uh, take a couple minutes uh, either now or later today before the memories evaporate and share with us uh, what do you think about the session what did you like uh, the most and so forth use mural to leave your feedback i want to thank dario for on behalf of all of us for the great and very deep and uh, uh, high entropy presentation on metaphors so kudos for doing that 
And um, what would be your, let's say, assignment uh, for all of us to digest uh, the main essence of your message you tried to get across? It, uh, let's say an assignment that would sum up uh, today's effort. Is there anything you would like to give us as a, like, you know, draw a metaphor for something or something like that? Is there anything like that? I want to, to finish what, with the same concept that I, I start. Don't try to be creative. Don't try to be uh, clever. Just try to be absurd. It's creating metaphors. It's like uh, a brainstorming process. Okay. So uh, you don't have to mm, try to come up with a clever idea. You have just you, you just have to be in that playful state. That's why I always insist to go back to your inner kid. Okay? Because you used to be an expert with that. Then school act like um like kryptonite, okay? Because they start giving you rules. The dog is brown, the uh, the sun is yellow, the mountain is brown. Uh, draw inside uh, color inside the 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 lines so uh, that 's when they start putting you a lot of adult approach and that 's when you start killing creativity so the best tip I can give you is just play, just be absurd, and always rem uh, uh, remember that keyword will save you. So instead of doing, okay, I, w I, I will draw a light bulb because uh, that's uh, what people will understand. I say, no, don't, dry, don't draw just a light bulb because that's a cliche and that's the part of the map that will be a, 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 a dead zone because no one will pay attention to that part. Uh, so always try to keep that playful state and use keywords to give sense to that drawing, to that incoherent drawing that will create a lot of attention. And remember, we are drawing maps to convey messages, but if no one read those maps, we fail. That's, That's it.